So going in the bar for nothing because he is searching in the pocket for cramming glasses. Cramming glasses is very indicates very poor person. He is very poor, so he he wants to get the his cramming glasses. Thirteen twenty exactly. The time bombs increases the curiosity because it does didn't uh, explode at the correct time, and the narrator seems to have a, a digital watch to tell us the countdown and the time event of this event. This waiting it is taking forever. This indicates the unwaitable queue and the curiosity of the. Uh, terrorist and the narrator. Any seconds now? No, not yet. Yes, now. This indicates the conversational language because the terrorist and the narrator are uh, making conversation with each other. Then suddenly the bomb explodes. It, it gives us the auditory imagery uh, and the tragic, uh, uh, tragic moment because. Uh, some, the whole people in the bar will be dead or injured by the in this incident. The terrorist wants to uh, make a uh, conflict between the public uh, and the government because uh, some uh, terrorists are suicide bombers, but this terrorist is not like that. He is uh, very inhumanity from other uh, for other people. The main theme of these poems are life versus death and inhumanity versus innocence and uh, mis luck versus misfortune. In the whole poem, the narrator uses countdown technique full of visual imagery and auditory imagery. These are the poetic, poetic techniques which are uh, used in this poem. Thank you for giving me this chance. That was a wonderful one from Bonyan. Thank you for your explanation. Now I call Davian to talk about the poem. We have to one of second grade. Alfred Edward Hoffman was a popular poet and he was born in uh, 1859 in England. He began his life as a clerk in the patent office for 11 years. Meanwhile, he was making his name in the field of textual criticism uh, by being engaged in some uh, serious researches and studies in the British Museum. Uh, and in the poem, uh, Farewell to Barn and Secondary, A. Houseman uses traditional ballad style. Ballad is a narrative poem which tells the story about a dramatic happening involving violent human emotions. Uh, this poem shows a traumatizing and a tragic situation of two brothers. The first line, the first stanza, by bidding farewell to the uh, surroundings. The, narrate, the speaker brings out the feeling of urgency in him. The intention of not returning uh, has clearly shown here by the repetitive utterances. The reader may feel sympathetic about the uh, speaker and be curious to know uh, what uh, really has happened. The speaker uh, speaks to the character named Terence that he won't come back again. In the second stanza, uh, the second stanza reveals the mystery of the murder and clears the reader's mind. The word sunburns is a metaphor and also it can be taken as a personification. The speaker accepts his crime and the faces, bloody hands, and uh, his knife is in my in his side uh, is uh, an emphasis for the crime. 
and this uh, can be taken as euphemis euphemism in the uh, third stanza reveals the truth of the relationship of uh, the victim and the murderer the victim and the murderer uh, are uh, brothers and from this uh, the speaker's crime uh, uh, is the uh, speaker's crime is uh, going to be changed as dramatically the uh, his mother is going to wait for her son to return home but they won't the love of the mother has been emphasized here uh, in the fourth stanza the speaker looks at his hand and holds it out uh, for the uh, his friend and says he has a bloody hand to shake from this uh, uh, it seems that the narrator is getting emotional or a little uh, at least a little distressed about his present situation the narrator says goodbye to the life that he had passed uh, because his life is going to change dramatically in the fifth stanza uh, the narrator again speaks to the character named terence uh, and he wishes him well the speaker wishes uh, him to have a good love and uh, he wishes luck for the lamastide festival lamastide is a harvesting festival Uh, which is celebrated on the august the first of the august in the last stanza the narrator is not willing uh, to leave the village because uh, why the present situation is uh, compelling him to do it the rick and the farm animals and all will be waiting uh, for the speaker to return but he is never going to return the uh, dinner which is made for him is going to get cold without him thank you that was a good explanation from david and thank you for your participating and i call varia to talk about the poem the huntsman i give the side to varia reading on a few uh, the poem huntsman written by edward lowbury is based on kenyan folklore and it covers several moral lessons the themes are related to the famous maxims like speech is silver and silence is gold or think before you speak and look before you leap according to the poem kagwa was a hunter of lions in the forest and one day he found a human skull in the forest he gave an answer uh, when he asked the skull how how it come to the forest it gave an answer the talking brought me here then he decided to reveal this uh, majestic discovery to the king the king did not like to accept it without evidence in the sense of in the sense the king is also exemplary to all of us not a believe in any uh, anything without sound proof so the king listened to kagwa with conscious mind kagwa failed to listen to the skull with conscious mind never since i was born of my mother have i seen or heard the of a skull which spoke it is an evident that the king had not doubt had a doubt about the talking skull anyone who is sensible can understand the reality that a skull does not talk nevertheless he tried to verify this mysterious matter by sending his guards to the forest at the same time he decided to impose a punishment to kagwa if it is was a lie the king's behavior implies that he was firm and strict for the liars and also he did not adhere to the superstitious beliefs 
He is exemplary to the politicians, at the rulers who believe in such superstitions, even in the in this modern in this modern world. However, Kagwa's incident is really complete completed because the skull because the skull answered for the Kagwa's question at their first meeting in the forest, but he did not want to ask some more questions and uh, verify the matter instead. Uh, he was in a hurry to meet the king and inform this mystery. Uh, he went to meet the king without sound and logical proof. He should have uh, he, he should have common sense, common sense that the king of the country was not his friend to tell everything uh, we would find in day-to-day -day life. He is in high authority with a lot of duties and responsibilities. Perhaps Kagwa would have had an innocent ambition to get a credit for his discovery and a royal prize for him. But he was not sensible enough to understand the king responses for for this type of message. That is why the maxim think before you speak and look before you leave is very appropriate to him. When the skull told Kakwa, talking brought me here, Kagwa did not want to get its deep meaning. He was highly impressed by the talking ability of the skull without realizing the deep message given by the skull. There was a, a detective. There was a detected message in his word that talking brought me, brought him death. The poet conveys that people should be more careful in their communication with others, especially uh, with those who are high authority. He could have controlled his sentiments without being in a hurry to meet the king. He talked to the king in a carefree manner, and he was not conscious enough to understand what the skull told him. This becomes the basics of the irony of the story. If he had really understood the moral message behind his utterance, Kagwa would not have met the king. Uh, he highly trusted both king and the skull. Untimely, the uh, death of Kagwa and the skull suggests that we should be very careful in our talking. Especially, we must talk only uh, necessary things. Otherwise, we have to face family problems uh, and even social problems. There are some occasions that we have to keep silent. That's why there is a proverb, silence is gold. In further implies that irres uh, irresponsible meaning less and uh, illogical talk brings destruction and death to the speaker. There is another saying that mouth affect both good and bad results. That is why our, uh, our adults always advise us to be careful of our talking. There are some people who are not intelligent enough to understand some uh, realities during their lifetime. Although the story of the poem is not uh, creditable, this hunter understood the reality of the life. That is why he told the skull talking, the skull talking brought me here after his death. Although the story comes from African folklore, all these moral lessons are relevant to the modern life. Thank you. Now I talk about the poem, The Clone's Wife. The Clone's Wife by Jonson Agard. Uh, Jonson Agard is a British playwright poet 
short story and children's writer who won many awards for poetry and has traveled throughout the poem. And um, Aga deals with the difference between appearance and the reality in this poem. The Clone's Wife by Jonsen Agard is a poem of 17 lines. Uh, it tells the professional and personal sides of the clone in his life. In the poem, the clone's wife is the speaker. Uh, she, us uh, she uses colloquial language to give the readers about the picture of her husband. There are two sides of him, the clone and the husband. The poem offers a construct to these sites and gives us a peek, uh, beh peek behind the red nose. Furthermore, as the title suggests, the poem introduces us the clone's wife. We get a picture of her as well. In the poem, the wife speaks of her uh, clone husband. Uh, she shows the duality between his professional life and his personal life. However, she also tells us about, uh, about herself. Uh, she is not a uh, she is not just a passive observer relating information about her husband she is an active participant in the story uh, the wife acts to cheer up her husband uh, taking on the role of a clone herself so uh, there is an element of role reversals at the play here although the poem is about the clone poet much emphasizes the wife of the clone uh, it is emphasize it's emphasize it is through the voice of the wife, the readers look at the clone. Though the wife describes the real nature of the, her husband, her, her true nature is revealed as a devoted wife who is trying her best to cheer up her worried husband. Therefore, the title suggests that though the subject matter is uh, about the clone, the wife's contribution is larger than his uh, contribution to the poem, maybe the life of the clones itself. Uh, the change of the world order portrays the hesitation or the confusion of the wife. Use of day-to-day -day language and the rhetorical questions are genuine value of the poem. Wife's hesitation creates a dramatic effort, showing that he is not going to tell a happy news about her husband. According to the wife's description of the clone, draws the parallels of the two accepts of, our life of her husband. She reveals that the clone is perfect at his uh, role on the stage, but at, but at home, he's a desperate character. Uh, the situation is ironical as one, um, as, as one expects a clone to be a happy person, but the clone uh, described by the wife moves at the home. Uh, that shows the reality behind the painted first verse real face. Though the clone uh, could cover up his sorrow behind a mask uh, at, at his home, the reason might be he is burdened by the pressure of the life. His job may not pay him enough. At the circus, he has to act before the audience, but at home he has to fa face the real life. His real life seems to be heavy. According to the third stanza, uh, wife clearly knows uh, where the clone changes his role to the, cl uh, to the clown to the husband. She understands that not the clone enters the house, but the uh, man with some burdens uh, entered the house. She explained his burden using the exaggerated words, world on his shoulder. This phrase of the poem reveals what, what the problem is with the clone and the understanding nature of the wife. The moment he walks through the door symbolizes the clones entering to the real world from the world of fantasy. A uh, clone may feel his responsibilities to the family and his poetry, which fails to fulfill them. According to the fourth stanza, at this point, the clone changes his role from clone into the spectre, uh, spectre where his wife takes his role to cheer up him. Her struggle to cheer up uh, shows that she's a caring wife who understands the feelings of his husband. The grammatical errors in the poem explains that uh, the literacy and the uh, education level of the wife. Wife may be complaining that the clone does not tell about um, tell about his worries. That tells about the relationship between the husband and the wife. Uh, the clone uh, does not like to does not like to give his burden to his wife and keeps him pain suffocated. Uh, according to the latter part of the poem, uh, Clone's mourning clearly depicts that he is suffering from the burden of his life, and he knows that struggle of his wife to keep him happy. Uh, though they have their own problems, both of them try to make their counterpart happy. This shows their mutual re relationship. 
though this story is about the clone, it has a universal applicability to we are the most, almost all the people in the society act nearly the same. They have to cover up emotions and show a different face to the society. Uh, but when they face the reality of life, they have to face it. Uh, nobody can hide from the reality in a way of most of us are clones covering our real selves. And moreover, uh, dual duality is the main theme in this poem, The Clone's Wife by John Eggert. Uh, this duality relates to the clone's personal and professional life. He acts one way to, at home and another at home. Uh, another at the society and moreover the love and the understanding of the wife is also admirable thank you for listening that was a good explanation from Arna. thank you for your explanation uh, now i'm going to talk about the poem i know why the caged bird sings this poem was written by maya angelou Maya Angelou is an American poet, memorist, actress, and she is known for her series of six other autobiographies, starting with I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings, which was nominated for the National Book Award. I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings is, in, is a 1969 autobiography about the early years of author Maya Angelou lives. Maya Angelou's racially centered poetry has a very powerful tone. Maya poem, I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings, is about the rep repression of the African-American race. She uses her coming-of-age story to illustrate the ways in which racism, the chakma, can be overcome by the strong character and love of literature. As a young black woman growing up in the South and later in the wartime San Francisco, Maya Angelou faced racism for the whites and poor treatment from the many men. This poem is a universal, universal pattern because nowadays the poem they talk about the reprivated people. There are some reasons for this reprivation uh, that they are the political, social, war, economy, etc. In, in this time, Africans came to America to, as to work as in the corn fields, and in the time they underwent to the racial discrimination. The white people discriminated the black people. They tortured the black people. Let's get into the poem. That the poem has six stanzas. And each sentence has carries up to seven to four to seven lines. In the first stanza of the first poem of the of the poem describes about the free bird. Free bird symbolizes physically and mentally free set of people. According to the history and also the background of the poem, we can in, infer that the symbol represents the white-skinned American people who possessed power and freedom without any restriction. In the first one. The writer tells uh, that how the bird enjoys its life. The free bird has no rules and it has his life is only a mastermind for his activities. The phrases such as, as leaves on the back of the wind, floods on, downstream and dips in the, his wings is the orange sun rays build up the image of the bird that how it flies. This is visual imagery and the free bird metaphorically compared to the white skinned American. In the second stanza, the poet contrasts the caged bird. Then the, in the second, the, the first diction of the second stanza, but gives a negative meaning. It's a conjunction with used in the negative and positive meaning. So it gives a negative meaning. The caged bird may be the suggestive of the dark skinned people who had experienced a mental and physical restrictions for the oppressive party. The narrow cage, clipped wings, and tight feet show the restriction of movement, that the passive structure shows their passivity and as well as it is indicated that the actions are done by somebody upon them. Bird tracks down his our age, creation and metric NH image of movement that the bird slowly moves around his limited space. The bar of the rage evicts the bottled up anger and cage of the which cannot be let out. The only way of expressing themselves is raising their voice. Knowing that that supposed on raises his voice as a song, the song is symbolic of their struggle made against the powerful oppressors. In this stanza, the poet used the technique alteration in the line seldom see grow, and the poet has used a metaphor in the phrase bars of rage. In the third stanza, although the caged bird sings in a fearful, trembling voice, the caged bird fears for the oppression 
which is which may result in singing although he does not know what is real he is requesting the reason is he has never experienced such a freedom he was born in the cage and he was grew up in the cage so he doesn't have never experienced such a freedom he keeps on struggling for the right which every human being should receive the freedom the power of the voice spreads all, all over the world this reason may might be it it is about freedom which is a universal crisis which many people face due to the caste color religion so on everything so his tune is heard on the distant hill suggest the impact of the struggle the restricted rhyming theme shows that the desire to have freedom is restricted by oppressors the first and, and fifth stanza again sharply contrast the regard of the privileges which a free bird and a cage earth include that after including of comfort they think that another opportunity i mean another breeze of the environment is quite favorable for them they have enough food opportunities waiting for them they are fat that, that it means fat worms are waiting for them and they enjoy the beauty of the world on down the bright lawn claiming that the old comfort of belong them nobody else so sighing trees may be sight suggestive that the nature more only worries about the black people suffer the regular scheme they fix the regularity on the process in the sixth fifth stanza when the dreams are dead there is no hope for living first line suggests the caged birds dream are dead and buried which means they have no hope for living even his powerless figure shadows the numerous harassments as all the opportunities are barred for him he started singing in which is his only thing he can do so in the last answer they says they are continuous struggle they are not ready to give up the battle till they receive the right place to live this is the analysis of the poem and there are some several themes that are reflected from the poem that freedom versus capacity captivity and the second theme is freedom as a universal and natural right as soon as a human has a right to live in a in a place as soon as the the animal should be have the right so the the harassment on the racial discrimination should be denied thank you for hearing me and next i call abhishek to talk about the pros that the lawar attack the lawar attack is a lecture from the colin cowder lecture by kumar sangakara so i use side abhishek to talk about it extract lahu attack by kumar sangakar the extract ha- extracted from the colin cowder lecture by kumar sangakar kumar sangakar is the only cricketer who, ca- who had participated in colin cowder lecture from sri lanka on the lecture on 5th july 2011 he speak in many topics some of them are history of sri lanka sri lanka's cricketing roots racial roots and bloody conflicts adjunas leadership search for unique players bigger roles for cricketers lahu attack and some other topics in the in the extract kumar sangar says about lahu attack on 3rd march 2009 in lahore pakistan on the day while to, going to play the third day of second test they have been attacked by 12 gunmen near the gaddafi stadium lahore pakistan on the attack six sri lankan cricket players were injured and six policemen and two civilians were dead on that day this is not only the first attack on international cricket players in 2002 there was a suicide bomb blast in front of the hotel where new zealand cricket players stayed in the par in the extract lahore attack the 
Kumar Sangakkara says about this attack clearly and tells who have attacked and how they managed on the attack and tell all about the Sri Lanka situation on that day. He says that in the area of Columbus site, there were the normal activities here. But in the war zone, there was many war against town people. On the bar, many people survived from grenades, bullets, and searching for the shelters. On 3rd March 2009, while they going to Lahu by a bus, this attack helped. And they tell first, first they tell that the bus has been shooter and here they bring a similar uh, rain tin roof and like a firecracker. And also then the Kumar Sangakara brings his leadership in this in the extract and shows his admiration for his own country. And also finally he tells about the meat with a soldier in a checkpoint. If we speak if the theme of the extract, the horror of terrorism, the terrorism uh, more than 30 years in Sri Lanka is revealed, and also the, the terrorism in Lahu, Pakistan also revealed in this extract. It spreads on sports. It's sure. It's mostly sure in this point because they're going there to for play a cricket match and also the strategy also revealed in this point. And also tell, we are Sri Lankans and we are to and we will get the hardship and we will overcome because I was pretty strong by the line they tell that they're pretty strong. And also Sangara's great personality. His role as the captain of the Sri Lanka international cricket team and also as an official ambassador and also good leader and commander for cricket team. And there are the speaker's pride and admiration for his own country. We can see by the lines, we are Sri Lankans and we are to and we will get to hardship and we will overcome because of Sri strong. He said that they are pretty strong because they are Sri Lankan and here he shows the patriotism on our country. And also, he tells our emotions help to, to our role as an unofficial ambassador. Because of this, the war against Pakistan to Sri Lanka has maybe started if they had taken the attack as a big thing. But Kumar Sankara didn't take this as a big thing. And also, this is the passion that the cricket and cricketers in Sri Lanka. This is the love that I strive every day of my career in the world. Here, he says that the cricket and cricket is Sri Lanka. He also, he brings the pride of admiration for his own country and his career as a Sri Lankan cricket player and cricket team captain. And also not only that, now he is also working as a coach in Sri Lankan cricket team. And the love for the cricket 
is revealed here. But I played my cricket, but there, Kumatsu Nakano says that cricket is mine, and it is enough to show the love on cricket but to Kumatsu Nakano. And this is like, this is the passion that cricket and cricketers about in Sri Lanka. This is the passion. He says that the cricket and the cricketers about in Sri Lanka has a big passion to be a cricketer. And also he says his career as a cricket player. Here, the Lahu attack brings a loyal feeling of pride one's country. At Tulan, Tushara says that he wishes a bomb would blast there, he can return to his home. As here, the, he tells as home is the country Sri Lanka. And he really gives a much priority to his country. And also the military man in the checkpoint says to Kumar Sangakara, if it's okay if I die, because it's my job. He tells that it's okay if not, because he will die for his country, Sri Lanka. And also tell if you but you were to die, it would be a great loss for our country. That says that it will be a great loss for Sri Lanka if Kumar Sangakara died in the attack. Thank you. That was a wonderful presentation, Kumishek. Now I call Dave again to talk about the poem, The Crown's Point. I use Saito again to talk about it. Johnson Nagat was born uh, in 1949 in uh, South America. Uh, he studied English, uh, Latin, uh, French very well. He worked for the uh, Guyana. Uh, Sunday Chronicle newspaper, uh, news, the Chronicle newspaper as a sub uh, editor and a writer for the uh, articles before moving uh, to the England in 1977. Agard, uh, now he's living in Britain. Agard has uh, seen many racial stereotypes and uh, cultural differences, class divisions around him. He uses a playful uh, approach with humor. The Clone's Wife by John Senegard uh, shows uh, the uh, clone's uh, life of uh, shows the defense of a clone's life from the uh, personal uh, to his uh, professional side. Uh, in the first line, in the first stanza, the, the uh, wife is uh, trying to, uh, is going to address his uh, address, uh, is going to describe her, her husband but he doesn't know where to start. And the uh, day-to-day uh, 